General Medicaid Warning The views expressed in Five Ish Minute Lore, The Lore Delivered in Rants, are sanctioned by their scholar Progenium as excess rageous. Prolonged exposure can result in loss of IQ, high blood pressure, random outbursts, and blunt force trauma to the skull, resulting in unconsciousness. Please consult your local physician for more information. Captain of the Serrated Sons Chapter of the Word Bearers 7th Assault Company Argyll Tall A prime example of a man who is a terrible, horrible person, but is somehow still the most likable individual amongst all of his brethren. Truly an enigma. Argyll Tall's entire existence is difficult to explain. To put it bluntly, I'm going to have to be excessively careful in the way I describe certain things because if you thought the Lilith video had a lot of lines that could be taken out of context, oh, you're in for a treat. Let me just throw out a single line that'll let you know what we're in for with this guy. He was recruited directly by Erebus. Argyll Tall was born on Colchis, and Erebus wanted the young Argyll to be a chaplain, just like him. But Argyll had different plans. Upon rejecting Erebus and joining a battle company, he did very well at distinguishing himself. So much so that at some point he was elevated to the captaincy of the 7th Battle Company of the Serrated Sons Chapter of the War Bearers. That's right, Roboti Gilliman. The chapter system was invented by fucking Wargar! We really don't hear much about Argyll Tall up until the point that Robute shows up on Monarchy and pulls a game workshop because on my crag, Gilliman had copyrighted the word chapter for his book, Codex of Star Chase, and he was showing up with the Emperor to execute an NDA. Monarchy was promptly wiped off the face of the planet, but don't worry! Lorgar and his legion are about to be told they can definitely still work for the Imperium as long as they don't use any symbols, heraldry, names, places, rites, voxcasts, or holovis that depict the Emperor of Mankind as a god. No, I'm not bitter about the state of Warhammer 40k animations. Everyone knows what happened at Monarchia. While Argyll Tall was standing around looking at the Ultramarines, we find out that frankly no one likes Corferon. Go figure. The shaming of Lorgar happens, and while Erebus is laughing evilly in the background, Argyll Tall finds a woman who got her eyes nuked out named Cyrene. Cyrene, before the nuking of Monarchia, was known as a Shush Ashla, which roughly translates to respectable hooker. He brought her along because he felt obligated and he put her in the quarters of the De Profundus, the flagship of his fleet. From that point onward, Cyrene would be there for him and the rest of the Serrated Sons to download all their insecurities onto. The good news was she wasn't rescued by the Emperor's children because at the end of the day, this story could turn rather awkward rather fast. So basically, she was still a Shushul Ashana, but she went from sex therapist to therapist. Argyll Tall also decided to make nice with some other new passengers who were sent by the Emperor, a few of the Custodians. In particular, he decided to make friends with Aquilon. Aquilon was the leader of the Custodians, sent to make sure that Lorgar and his legion were being a bunch of good boys and not doing anything stupid. Yeah, that lasted all of 20 seconds. After conquering a world, the Custodians literally had every gun in the legion pointed at them after Lorgar basically told them that they were biological waste and that he was going to talk to his legion alone, so they should fuck off. The Custodians didn't deem that worth reporting. Now, I'm not about to sit here and imply the Custodians were blind and stupid because I would never say that about the greatest servants of the Emperor, but by the throne are they something that means blind and stupid! It was there that Lorgar hatched his master plot. That was all his idea, and had nothing to do with Erebus coming up with the plot, planning the plot, detailing the plot to him, and giving him the contingencies of the plot. Oh no, this was all Lorgar's idea. Fast forward and Lorgar is chilling with Argyll and Argyll's fleet and they just arrived on what will be Cadia. And lo and behold, Lorgar and Argyll as well as a bunch of other word bearers are on their way to watch a Cadian hippie jam band. Now everyone knows Cadia as an Imperial Fortress world but this was before Corvus Corax wanted to show Lorgar why a flock of crows is called a murder. Now at this point life gets interesting because for some reason Argyll Tall only really noticed things were getting weird was when he went to see Lorgar watching a woman act like she was getting taken to Pound Town by something invisible. So a space stripper. Also it might have something to do with the blood sacrifices that were going on but you know who am I to judge. Argyll Tall couldn't believe what was going on and neither could one of the custodians who just walked in. Alright, somebody explain this to me. Explain how the word bearers can be taken seriously as a legion when not one of them was sitting there looking outside of the tent. Everybody was just like watching what was going on inside the tent. So much so that a 12 foot tall gleaming golden statue managed to just walk into where they were 20 feet from their Primarch. 
Now I will talk all the shit in the world about the word bearers, but I'm not gonna say anything about this particular custodian who went by the name of Vendatha. I'm not gonna say he was a moron, but by the throne he was a word that means the same damn thing! So basically Vendatha walks in to a who's who of the word bears and finds them watching blood sacrifices and softcore porn and instantly calls Lorger a traitor. He then pulls the equivalent of this. You're all under arrest. He then tells them if they try to pull their weapons, this goes from an arrest to an execution. If you gotta be dumb, you gotta be tough. Well, custodians are tough, but not tough enough to handle a room full of space marines. He got a sword through his mouth from Argyll Tall from the trouble, and he was still alive. The space stripper started screeching that this event was ordained, and for some reason, even though everything was telling Argyll Tall what he was witnessing was 9 to the 15th power completely fucked up, he just sat there and watched the custodian get impaled up the ass with a spear. Then, well, the space stripper turned into a demon. At this point, I'm wondering if I'm watching the word bears the Emperor's children. The space stripper demon cut a deal that Argel Tall will be taken with a few friends into the Eye of Terra, and Lorgar actually asked if the space stripper demon would hurt them, and it said yes. And Lorgar agreed, because he's such a good guy. Argel Tall was tasked with delivering a lie to the rest of the custodians about how a bunch of tribal humans to whom the spear was high technology managed to kill a few word bearers and Vendatha himself. Now, I'm not gonna say the custodians must have been high to accept this story, but what the hell, you get it. I am not fucking drunk. Can you tell the time? Yes. I am not fucking drunk. So the space stripper demon named Ingethel takes our girl Tall into the Eye of Terror on a ship tells him in front of the crew that she's going to kill the crew, shows him an Eldar world getting murdered by the birth of the Sinesh, and then shows him how Lorgar and the other Primarchs were made, and no, it doesn't involve Big E showing Erda the Big D, which has strangely taken on a whole new meaning since I wrote this script initially. I love you, Rufa Alvabutza. Space stripper Ingethel then lets Argyll Tall know that he'll die sometime in the future under the shadow of Great Wings, and then drops another nugget of knowledge, which is something that shouldn't be that surprising considering what I've been saying so far. The 17th Legion, the Word Bearers, have a specific thing in their gene coding making them rapidly loyal to their Primarch. In short, the entirety of the 17th has daddy issues, and I mean extreme daddy issues. Pornhub levels of daddy issues. This is why Argel Tall and many of the more reasonable members of the Word Bears have gone along with so much ridiculous crap and will continue to do so in the future. Argel Tall simply says, yes, daddy, and does whatever daddy Lorgar tells him to because he's literally programmed to. The entire reason the 17th is so unrelentingly in awe of Lorgar is all part of the damn plan. Basically, the Word Bears are full of heavily muscled men who want to do whatever daddy tells them to. My son, come watch this space trip with me and then beat up this guy and shove a spear beside ass. Okay, Daddy. Son, go into space with this weird creature that is promising to hurt you. Yes, Daddy. My son, you've got demons in you, but I want you to know that I'm proud of you. You handled it so well. Thank you, Daddy. Oh, by the throne, I am one more of those away from getting demonetized. Argyll Tall then made the grand decision to destroy the Gellerfield on board the ship. True to her word, Ingethel massacred most of the crew and killed all the war bearers, only to shove demons deep inside of them. At that point, Argyll Tall was resurrected and used the dead crew like beef jerky. After he gets back to real space, he goes and tells the truth about everything, but Daddy Lorgar is kind of worried that his boy is now so sassy with him. Argyll Tall manages to hide the fact he's got demons inside of him from the custodians. But I cannot see, I'm legally blind. P.O.P. All the Pray these all good pimps, boy, baby, for life. Which, considering the custodians attached to the word bearers seem to have the situational awareness of a can of tuna, it doesn't surprise me. Who did he tell? Cyrene. At the same time, he was promoted to chapter master, and I hear Gilliman in the background seething. You see, all the space marines who Daddy Lord are allowed to get demons inside them got a new name. The Gal Vorbeck. For over 40 years, he flies around with the custodians and they never once catch on to the fact that he's possessed. All the while, he's grabbing up other war bearers and putting demons in them because Daddy said so. Finally, though, Isfahan was happening, and the demons that were in the word bearers, Gal Vorbeck, came to the forefront in blistering apparency. Argyll Tall could actually go blow for blow against the custodian, which is no mean feat for an Astartes. Just to give you a little bit of context, the typical custodian could kill an Astartes in three hits, from start to finish. So basically, the custodian's having any kind of problems whatsoever with a space marine would be like a space marine having problems with a baseline human wielding a stick. 
Suddenly, though, the custodians who were still in the ship, by the way, find out from a photograph that shit just got real and flat out murder Cyrene, which causes Argyle Tall to murder them all back. At this point, Argyle is starting to get along really well with his new friend in his head, the demon who was named Wrong. We next see our boy Argyle being broached here with a swell guy named Karn before the betrayer was the betrayer, and I imagine their first meeting was something like this. Oh, my dad is an idiot. Wait, you too? Apparently the two of them met and decided their dads were both dumbasses and from that understanding came a bromance the likes of which was rarely seen. At this point, we must reintroduce Erasus, the fuckwitted shit given himself who tells Argel his bro will get killed and then resurrects Cyrene to get Argel to trust him. Argel Tall was actually warned that Erasus would try something like this, but meh. Who cares about warnings? It's not like it's done him any good so far. So pretty much Argyle Tall wipes himself out trying to kick Karn from getting shanked in the middle of a battle, and when Eris Sus comes up to supposedly give him 5,000 EXP for completing the Erisy side quest Save Your Bro, the entire time Rom is screaming at him to kill Erebus, right up until the point where Erebus stabs Argyle Tall in the spine. Erebus killed him because in the end, if Argyle Tall lived, Karn would not have become the betrayer. He would not have fallen fully to the influence of Korn. And from the perspective of Erebus, the entire war would be lost. So basically, Erebus betrayed the betrayer's friend to make the betrayer the betrayer. Because if he didn't betray the betrayer's friend, the betrayer's friend would betray the betrayer's betraying future. So the betraying of the betrayer's friend ensured the betrayer would betray the traitors and become known as the betrayer. What the fuck did I just say? Before he died, Argel Tall said that he was supposed to die in the shadow of Great Wings. Sure enough, he was in the shadow of the Imperial Aquila. Fuck Erebus!